This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash cityscapes. Hi guys, Cityscapes here and welcome back to Verville episode 49. Here on screen right now you can see what we built in the last episode. We were working on the lower section of the Riggy Rack Railway system, inspired by the real-life Riggy Bahnen, which were also the sponsor for last time's episode. I made that giveaway with the four day passes for two people to win. And we selected the winners in the live stream from the 26th of uh, December. The winners were Mr. 99 Kuba and Leonard Legras. So congratulations to you guys. Everything should have worked out. They contacted me or in reverse I contacted them. And uh, I already sent them the day passes. So yeah, enjoy your trip to the Riggy Mountain. Today you get a very good idea of how this uh, thing looks like in, in real life. I also included uh, a lot of drone shots that I'm eager to show you, um, but uh, yeah, more on that in a, in a bit. So today we are wrapping up this whole project here, um, and that's why we are focusing on the upper part, the upper 50% of this, uh, of the whole route for the Rigibon. Right now you see me working on the terminus station on the mountain peak. It's called Riggy Kulm in real life and uh, yeah, I'm just working on the end section for the vehicles here. Um, there's a little depot on top of the mountain as well as a double tracked terminus uh, station. The Riggy mountain itself has a very prominent shape, it looks a bit like a, like a shim. And I tried to shape the mountain in city skylines here in a similar fashion. So I used uh, the grey flame rocks for, for um, that idea as well. But I think now it's already time for the first few uh, drone shots. Uh, let me show these to you. You can see the mountain restaurant slash hotel here, as well as the terminus station and that little um, depot I mentioned before, as well as another building. Not really sure what exactly it is. Currently we are looking to the south, where the whole alpine mountain range is. It's a truly stunning scenery. The drone shots here were recorded in uh, in spring and I completely forgot that there's a high chance that there's snow on, on the Riggy. Because the idea was to use these drone shots in the Verville intro as well, with a nice transition from the drone shots to the city skyline stuff. I, but I didn't really want to place uh, snow on the mountain here in game. So I abandoned the idea of uh, including them in the intro. But right now we are working on that... Uh, restaurant slash uh, hotel. The main building has been built in a similar fashion like the Art Goldau station. Of course I'm talking about uh, in-game building, not in real life. So I just butchered some of these Baroque buildings from, from Titan, kind of transformed them in a 
into a modular kit so I had the, the facades I could put together and just slap a roof on top of it. And the lower sections looking very modern in real life so I tried to do that as well in, in game here. Right now I'm building the secondary track for the Fitznow Riggy Barn. As mentioned in the last episode there are two lines in real life that go up to the mountain, one from the side from Lucerne from Fitznow and the other one from Art Goldau and they meet a little bit below the mountain peak in a other middle station called Rigi Staffel but I didn't really build that in, in City Skylines here I, I really wanted to streamline the build a bit because as mentioned before I made the drone shots last spring so it's uh, yeah it's uh, soon a year old project and even though I really really loved this build and it kind of has a sentimental value to me I still wanted to wrap up the, the project. This shot is super interesting. You can see Art Goldau down there. I tried to capture a similar view in the cinematics in the end of the video. I think it's just super fascinating to see that village over one and a half kilometers down in the valley from up of the, from the mountain peak. I think that just looks absolutely amazing. I really, I really love mountains. <laughs> but back to working on the on the peak here. I tried with these uh, slope networks to hide the, the cliffs here and there a bit. Because in general, this side of the mountain is not super steep. There aren't too many cliff uh, walls on, on this side. But later on, you get to see the drone shots from the other side of the mountain, as well as in the end of the video, the cinematics again. You will, you will see that the other side is super duper steep. It's really fascinating, the shape of this, uh, this mountain range. And another fascinating aspect is that it's uh, one of the biggest mountains from the pre-Alps. This means that you get to see this mountain from a very far distance already. Looking to the north from the mountain peak as we do right now, you will see in the drone shot that it's super flat terrain on, on the other side. On top of the rig is also a very prominent antenna for radio, television and whatnot. And uh, yeah, here you get to see the, the real life thing. You're still more or less looking to the south side and uh, it was very hard to capture the, the whole look of the mountain and I was so scared to move too far away with the drone because it was super super windy up there but I still think these shots really capture the vibe very well and you get an idea of how steep this mountain actually is on, on this other side. Man, I was so scared flying around with the drone here. I, I even briefly lost connection to the drone itself and oh man. But yeah, it was absolutely worth it and uh, luckily in the end it worked all out and you get to see those amazing shots right now. And here I'm still working on the antenna thingy. Uh, it has a, an observation desk at the 6 meter mark. It's nothing too crazy but you get an even better view from, from up there. And I really wasn't sure how exactly I could get uh, people up here. Because as usual, I want to see people using the, the stuff I built. And yeah, up here it was very tricky. So I decided to make an underground access road. Just use the normal Manila road for that. And uh, I shrank it down a bit in size. So it doesn't warp the terrain too crazy. And then I placed some uh, block buildings from uh, Nylin on, on this road. And maybe also a school or something like that, because schools attract a lot and lot of people, lots and lots of students. Um, the only downside is that the students, they look very similar in the game, so you have the same type of citizens all over the place. But uh, yeah, it's still better to have a lot of people than uh, no one. I had to make a little custom sign with uh, procedural objects for the restaurant here. Maybe I really should download some better fonts for, for PO, because this is just uh, Arial, probably. It's not looking too fancy, but uh, it, it does the trick. Speaking about tricks, I really like using these observation decks from the Park Life DLC, I think they are. Yeah, I think they are from the Natural Reserve uh, pack. I always turn them into PO to uh, extend the legs a bit, so they fit nicely to the terrain. And uh, then you can play some binoculars or, uh, or also uh, sim props on top of them. I think I forgot about that uh, this time around, but yeah, that's uh, just a nice uh, touch you could add. Up here we also have lots and lots of uh, hiking path. You can imagine it's uh, really nice to go for a hike up here. 
only downside in game here was that uh, the gravel path and just path in general are very wide it's uh, yeah it, it, it's kind of hard building anything on steep tricky terrain in, in this game here and that's the view to the north side isn't it absolutely f fantastic you can even see as far as to zurich I mean, it lies behind the Jutliberg, but uh, if you know where to look, you uh, you get an idea where where it is. I also love seeing all the farmlands from up here. It's just a very, very calming view, in my opinion. And uh, here I try to make a small church that is uh, sitting up up there. Um, it's completely made out of stones, and so I used these uh, French, I think they are French houses. They had a somewhat fitting texture for, for that purpose. So I changed their shape a little bit with procedural objects and uh, put them back together so it resembles uh, a church. On the right side here you can see that I also have that medieval city tower sitting there, which also has this gray stone uh, texture that was resembling the real-life counterpart uh, very well. Yeah, it's uh, nothing too crazy, just a nice little addition. Um, there was one side of the, of the building missing, so I had to butcher another building, just using one side of the facade, and uh, then it was uh, done. Okay, so now we are uh, done with the mountain peak, but there is still one other middle station. If you are familiar with the area and everything, please keep in mind that a lot of it is just fictional, but uh, I just draw a lot of inspiration from, from real life. So for that middle station, I decided that I needed uh, another access road, but this time around I wanted to have it visible. Not like before an underground tunnel in the middle of the mountain. So I used this uh, rural road from uh, Ronix. And again, you can see how tricky it is to really use these types of networks uh, in steep terrain. It's really not meant for that purpose, but with node controller and, and all that good stuff, you, you can kind of get it to work. So, uh, having another access road for the middle station means that we can again place those uh, cube houses everywhere or, or block buildings or however they are called. So this little village up there will also be nice and lively. And the rack railway system will actually be used, which is uh, amazing to see. Not sure what I'm doing here, but you can see what middle station I'm talking about. Now we are developing the actual train station. I wanted to have a very little plaza in front of it, so I used these class pedestrian path, made a roundish shape in front of the station, so later on I can place uh, a little tree and maybe a bench or something uh, in, in the middle of that. Uh, space. The focal point of this middle station here will definitely be the, the mountain spa, you can see here right now. There is a thermal pool in uh, on the actual Riggy mountain, it's called Riggy Kaltbad, and I've been there at my birthday and it was absolutely amazing, I really really loved it. There was nothing better than chilling in those uh, hot pools while enjoying the stunning view from up there was so great that I really wanted to capture that vibe and represent it here in, uh, in Verville as well. But still, I wanted to make some uh, fast, or in general, I want to make some fast progress to um, yeah, bring this series to an end, like, like I'm saying in uh, every single episode these days. So everything is not too crazy detailed, but uh, you'll get the idea, that's for sure. Because the terrain is so insane in here, I had to make a rim around the lower part of the mountain spa with these uh, very interesting looking prop walls. And then I decided to use some kind of buildings, just the, the front side of them, to mimic the idea of a basement uh, for this spa. A very modern basement in, in that case here. The terrace needs to be f fenced off, of course, so people don't fall down. Um, but to preserve the nice view from up there, I went for uh, glass railing. 
yeah, I think that really looks um, very interesting. Those modern glass uh, stuff and the basement stuff there with the oldish wooden looking mountain spa on top of it. For the floor of the terrace, I went with these stone tile. I think they are the perfect mix between rustic and modern. And in general, they just look great in, in this game here. I always jumped a bit forth and back between the, the spa area and the, the station here, as well as uh, a bit later on the, the little village uh, we will develop around here. But yeah, sorry for the inconsistency, but uh, maybe it also keeps it interesting to you, I don't know. Like in the lower middle station, I wanted to have also a very small terrace around this train station here. It, it is kind of common to see that the train stations are often combined with a little restaurant or something. And it's just very nice sitting there and watching the trains arrive and depart and the people walking around the area. And of course enjoying the nice view from up there. The Swiss flag can't be missing, that's uh, always mandatory in the mountains. Yeah, uh, we are just uh, trying to develop this little village up here. I assume there are better assets on the workshop that I'm using here, but I really don't want to bloat the Verville save even more with, uh, yeah, even more assets. I'm already using over 10,000 different assets and I really try to stick with what I have now. So yeah, some buildings don't really, really fit in uh, this uh, kind of setting, but uh, I guess it does the job using a lot of these uh, Titan half-timbered houses. And um, for the farm stuff, I discovered that the uh, creator Bearded Monkey, I think it's his name. The assets are actually quite old, but they still look fantastic. He really did a great job. And yeah, for the older assets that aren't looking that great, you can still use PO and spice things up a bit, so yeah. You saw me just changing the roof color a little bit for for that building, so now it, it fits a bit uh, better. Something I didn't really do, even in the cinematics you will see that, are the, the poles for the train wires, the overhead wires. This is like the most tedious task to do, but I will definitely have to do it very soon, because I think after this episode, we could record another first-person ride from this uh, cog rail route here. That would look pretty cool, I assume. But, but no promises, we will, we will see. Yeah, in this enclosure I had to replace the functioning uh, animals with prop animals because there wasn't a small enough animal spawner for, for, yeah, for, for the fence here. Maybe I should have made the fence bigger, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's still looking okay, I guess. Often when there's cliff texture showing up in the terrain texture here, I placed some of these grey flame rocks over them. It kind of livens up the terrain a bit. Looks a bit more, how to say, more three-dimensional. Then I often surround the, the rims of the, of the rocks with some uh, smaller greenery. Yeah, and other than that, just uh, detailing a little bit uh, around uh, the buildings here. Some tractors and trailers and, and whatnot. Nothing too crazy because, yeah, <laughs> you know why. Trying to speed th things up a bit. As you can see here, there are already people walking around, which is just great. Always super satisfying to see. And yeah, here I cheated a little bit. I wanted to have the feeling of some people arriving by car but i really didn't want to enable parking anywhere up here because you know the parking mechanism they can be um how to put it a bit inconvenient from time to time especially when you are trying to record cinematics so i just placed down some uh, prop cars and shaped the road with note controller in form of a of a classic uh, calder sack and i used this uh, chain fence here just to add another little detail. Yeah, and uh, while we are uh, just uh, finishing up the detailing in this area a bit, I'd like to draw your attention to my other social media channels like Instagram, where I post photorealistic screenshots. Actually, I'm, I've not been super active there recently. I, sh I should really get more into that again. 
Then I'm also live streaming from time to time on Twitch, a bit more than on, on YouTube. Actually, I just had one live stream on YouTube so far, but it was quite successful, I have to say. So I'm definitely thinking about doing that a bit more often. Then I have a Discord server with a really nice community. So if you just want to hang out, chat a bit and uh, yeah, share your own creations, definitely join my Discord server. And uh, Twitter is just for uh, random rants or whatever, not very specific. And yeah, of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below the video. It really, really helps the algorithm to promote uh, my video, show it to a wider audience and just helps grow the channel, which is uh, great. So more people get to see my content. Also, a special thanks to my Patreon at this point. You really help lifting this channel to the next level, especially with my future series. You really helped me paying for custom assets and all that good stuff. But really, everyone that's uh, watching my content here already helps out a lot. So thank you, each and everyone, and a very happy new year, guys. Off to a fantastic uh, 2022. Really hope to see you in the next one.